Good afternoon, PSQ members and esteemed officers. Welcome to PSQ National Webinar entitled Driving Sustainability Through Quality. My name is Ara De Vero, and I will be your host this afternoon. I know Christmas is just nine days away as you hear it from our music a while ago. So may I ask everyone to send their Christmas hashtags in the chat box. Yan. Ano ba ang ating mga wish this Christmas? Can you please share what are your thoughts about the coming Christmas since nine days na lang and Pasko na? Alright, so we're receiving a lot we, we are receiving some hashtags here right now it says here hashtag christmas away from Phnom Penh Cambodia according to Sir Ray and then also hashtag health and prosperity from uh, Danielle Evalia of and of course from our speaker sustainable and quality Christmas from Mary Big peace and joy. So thank you so much for your active participation. And I think we are now ready to start the ball rolling. But uh, just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat box and I'll bring them up during the Q&A as uh, we will have um, time for questions at the end. All right. So today, the topic is not uh, so new to us, but very le relevant nowadays. Um, sustainability is not anymore just trendy, but a necessity, making our world a better place to live in, in a uh, social responsibility of all nations, organizations, and individuals. Given that uh, thought, quality practitioners play an important role in embedding sustainability into an organization's culture and processes. In this session, June Roy, our speaker, the Organization Development Consulting Head of Nomura Research Institute here in Manila, will share practical insights on how quality is related and how it can be integrated into sustainability. 
Here are the learning objectives. One, define sustainability and how it relates to quality. Two, interpret the integration of sustainability and quality. Third, examine how to manage sustainability using the quality management system framework of ISO 9001. Next is to analyze how IMS and other ISO standards are linked together towards supporting the sustainability development goals and sustainability. And last, to determine the role of quality practitioners in advocating sustainability culture within their organizations. Our resource speaker, Mr. Juan Amroy, or Junroy, is currently the OD Consulting Head of Nomura Research East Institute here in Manila, as mentioned a while ago. NRI is the 2019 Top 1 Global Think Tank in the for-profit category, also the top 10 fintech in the world, and the biggest consulting company in Japan with 86 subsidiaries and presence in 16 countries. June is also the immediate past president of Philippine Society for Talent Development, and aside from HR, June is also a quality management practitioner since 1999. He has led the establishment and the certification or recertification of quality management system and integrated management system for several organizations here in our country and in the Middle East. He is a certified lead auditor for ISO 9001 and a, DD, and a DDI certified facilitator, a professional scrum master, and certified MBTI facilitator. As a facilitator, June has designed and conducted training locally and abroad on a wide range of topics focusing on leadership, strategy, culture building, innovation, quality, team building, and personal effectiveness. June is one of the leading voices and opinion leaders in sustainability culture in the Philippines. Now let's give a virtual clap to Mr. John Roy. Thank you, Ara. So that was indeed a wonderful introduction. And hello, everyone. It's my first time to uh, present uh, with uh, your organization. I attended before one meeting when I was with another company, but after that, I kind of uh, uh, lost touch. I've been in quality since 1999, as uh, Ara mentioned. And so I kind of miss this kind of discussions uh, because my my repertoire of uh, expertise uh, includes quality, not just OD and HR. So what I'd like to achieve today, and I hope this can be your takeaway, is a clear articulation and appreciation of your role uh, as quality professionals and practitioners, our role uh, in sustainability, and why is that uh, important? And I hope that with that kind of uh, takeaway, it would trigger and inspire you even more uh, to look deeper, to expand your knowledge and search for more answers and become sustainability champions uh, focusing on the quality aspect. So that's uh, the key takeaway that I'd like everyone uh, to gain out of this. And before we start, I'd like to ask, okay, we will cover the role of quality and sustainability, and where are we in the SDGs? SDGs are your, anyone who knows SDG? I am sure you do. So that's our sustainability development goal, 17. So I wouldn't ask anyone to enumerate what are the 17. No? But uh, the other one, it's what has been done already in the field quality for sustainability, because there's there has been developments already in this area. And what we can do as quality practitioners as next step, and what are the things that we can immediately do even after now? So let's talk first about 
uh, what is sustainability to you? No? So this is just a one minute exercise so that we can gain uh, insights from each one. I am sure this is not your first time to hear about sustainability. So we're not asking for the standard definition uh, from UN, but uh, to you, no? whenever you hear about the word sustainability, as it relates to our uh, people, planet, and uh, progress, what, what is it to you? No? So can we have a one-minute sharing of our insights in the chat box? Uh, no right or wrong answers. Just your thoughts. So I'm in the chat box now and excitedly awaiting for your insights. One word, two words, few words, uh, that would do. And our one minute uh, starts now. So this is short of saying our interaction today, it's interactive, it's not going to be a straight lecture. So provide support, yeah. And uh, sustainability, yeah, it's really about long-term and it would involve personal development. tama, no? Viability, uh, balancing our focus, self-sufficiency, nice. Oh, uh, regenerative. Okay, I'd like to speak about that in another forum because uh, beyond sustainability, the next uh, step is actually regeneration. Right. So thank you, Seth, for sharing that. Yeah, there is the profit side, so economic growth, use of resources wisely. It can stand alone, sustainable. No, uh, uh, it can stand alone in the sense that what we do today in our current generation will enable our future generations to continue, right? So uh, we are not killing their future and their hopes uh, based on what we do today. So that's the deeper meaning of what can standalone means, continuity and beyond now. By being mindful of what we do now that can impact our world, our communities uh, in the next generations, right? No, interesting. So there's a lot of uh, insightful uh, answers here. Improvement in the quality of life. Certainly, no, uh, Rhea? Uh, simply because one of the SDGs is hunger, about uh, poverty, uh, even DEI, uh, diversity inclusion, uh, that's improving the quality of life, especially for those who are, uh, you can say, neglected or discriminated upon. So it's not only from the economic perspective. So thank you, everyone. Just keep on sharing because uh, we can synthesize this uh, later on. And I love your answers. No, The next one is, for me, the foundational question. Okay? The other one, it's the take off, but this one, it's more into the heart. Why does sustainability matter to you uh, personally? You are a quality practitioner, but at the same time, you are a husband, a mother, a citizen of the country, a community member. So we're not looking only at your role as quality professionals, but as you, as Ara, as Ray, you know, as Annabeth. Why does it matter to you? Again, this is another one minute question. And as you write your questions or your answers, I kind of interact with you and synthesize uh, the thought process. You know? And everything that we will talk about today regarding the integration of quality and sustainability uh, stems from uh, this question. Because if it does not matter to us, then why integrate? No? Why even bother to, uh, uh, to do something about it? But I'm sure it matters to you. That's why you are here. Uh, and that's why we want to know your insights on this. Right? Thank you, Noel, for starting uh, the first one to thrive. It ensures our future. Yun na. <laughs> Sin intention na ni Ara. <laughs> it ensures our future uh, and the future of uh, the next, next generation. Yeah, it can build our credibility. And I like, this is what I love to hear, you know, that you see it not as a part of your job, uh, not because somebody is telling you to do, but you, you see a moral compunction, you see a moral obligation, and you are driven by that. And for me, 
because that one would ensure our future and we can thrive along with that thought. Okay? And uh, stemming from moral obligation can build our credibility because we do things based on here. And yeah, having a solid vision ensures that what we invested, I like the rhyme and I like the thought, uh, this, uh, what we invested will never be wasted. No? Great, so what about the others? Uh, 30 seconds, right? Why sustainability matters to you, not just as a quality practitioner, but as who you are, as a family member, as an organization person, as a community member, as a citizen, right? So while you're writing your answers, let me go to the next one, okay? So why sustainability matters? So I'll be sharing to you a few slides about this and let's have a conversation. So this is uh, the 17 SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals. So it's also like asking, why does this matter to us? No. Numbers game, uh, when I say numbers game, it's like asking ourselves, uh, what sustainability development goal matter to me personally? And so there's no right or wrong answer there because it depends on our context, our situation, our circumstances. So for example, uh, no poverty is uh, always at the top of uh, my head uh, simply because of my personal circumstances. I, I came from a poor family. So there's a natural uh, tendency for me to go into it. No? I'm in training. So naturally, I'm uh, also into quality education. No? And, and for the others, uh, so can you type, uh, this is like 10 seconds or maybe 30 seconds, maximum one minute, just a number, right? Uh, you can pick three numbers, no need for the text. What are those sustainability development goals that uh, resonate to you personally? Yeah, you can pick one or three or two numbers or even more, but it's like a maximum of uh, one minute that we do this. And this is important, so I, I hope everyone can participate, uh, even me. So for me, I will type my answer. So that's one. Four. And ten. Right? So it doesn't mean that I don't, uh, I don't uh, care about the environment, but these are the things that resonate to me and things that I can do something about. No? Of course, all uh, SDGs are important, and so we can see. No? So we in quality, we love data. And uh, the actionable insight here, I should type, is uh, what about the organizations that we work with? No, What are the sustainability development goals uh, where uh, or which resonate to the people that you work with. No? So that becomes an interesting uh, data to start with, right? Go on, right? So I can see numbers, two, nine, three, right? So ano yung nine? Nine is decent work and economic growth, which ties up also to uh, no poverty. 10 is reduce uh, inequalities, right? And so see, uh, as you choose your number, um, before we go into the domain of quality, uh, and let's focus first on who we are, there are already certain things that you can actually do, like reduce inequalities. Do you know that uh, in every meeting and conversation that you go through in life, you have the opportunity to reduce inequalities? Uh, I'll give you an example of that. So if you are leading a team, you are the leader, or if you are the senior talking to somebody who is new in an organization, or if you are a parent uh, talking to your son, there is a kind of neutral inequality there. Inequality that is not wrong, but it's a gap that is defined by the circumstances. Now, we can reduce that. For example, uh, giving a chance for others to voice out their opinion right? Giving them a chance to uh, speak out and call out or even uh, provide contrary ideas. So even in that minute uh, action, we can already 
is start reducing some kind of inequality. So the conclusion here is, regardless of the numbers that you have chosen, uh, we can do something about it. Right? We can start even even after today. Right? You talk about gender equality, uh, then it requires a mirroring. Was there a time that I acted or I cracked possibly any joke that might be seen as uh, gender insensitive? So uh, those are things that we can do. Now, let's go to uh, this one. So I'm not sure if you come or if you have the chance to uh, look at the Ambition uh, 2040 or Philippine Development Plan, but it it's it provides an answer to the same question why sustainability matters to us because we have uh, an Ambition uh, 2040 and we want our nation to develop as well. And regardless of our politics, regardless of uh, whoever we support, uh, the Ambition 2040 and the Philippine Development Plan uh, are the groundwork of people who are constants in the government. Uh, those technocrats who are, you know, uh, exploring all the avenues uh, and putting their hearts out to come up with this. Uh, and we're not talking only of the presidents no, or the elected officials. So this is our ambition. No? So where are we no, in SDG? 19.99 million Filipinos live below poverty line, right? So what does quality practice something uh, something to do with that later i will tell you right so I, i'll be i'll be showing you pictures and images and tell me uh what you can make out of it and how does quality relate uh, to these pictures right they speak for themselves yeah this one is an actual photo that i've taken when i went to a particular place in the field, I have a companion who talked about one of the speakers also in that conference uh, somewhere in Bohol. Naturally, uh, you cannot because there is a barrier here. So obviously, this one was made for uh, not for the wheelchair but for luggages. So when you talk about inclusivity, uh, diversity, there are still uh, organizations that are not mindful of that, as you can see. I'm sure you've uh, uh, seen this, no? Um, while uh, about traffic, this one, this one, uh, proliferation of fake news, bardagulan sa internet or sa social media. Uh, if you can see the quality of the conversations in the social media, regardless of your politics and beliefs, my goodness, uh, it's the antithesis and it's the opposite of what we would like our world, our world, and it is our our social world. Just imagine what kind of world war that is going on there, right? And it's not good. If you look at the Global Gender Report. So this is uh, New Zealand as a benchmark, but we're sl sliding back. No? And within uh, ASEAN countries, uh, we are not scoring uh, high. In fact, even Laos and Germany or Laos and uh, Myanmar are now in terms of global uh, gender gap. So something has to be done, uh, obviously. And while we... There's still a lot of challenges, and uh, you have to take note that 99.5% of the enterprises in the Philippines are coming from uh, the enterprise or the MSMEs, right? And so th the vulnerability of uh, the women and the others no, into that sector is still there. And if you look at the global report, uh, from 2015 to 2022, you can see from this image alone, right, that there is a slow progress or reversal in most of the SDGs. And what about in the Philippines? We have, uh, we slid back to 103rd from 85th, right? So it's not a, a good uh, picture and a good number, right? And if you look at our ranking, just Focus on the color, right? There's only one green. 
And in the arrow, there's only one green. That means Philippines has nine out of 17 SDGs in red and only one in green. And one in green because it's focusing on the investments done by big corporations on the industry. Yeah, but in all the other areas, either we are at yellow, amber, or red, right? Given the photos you've seen, can you now describe in one phrase or one sentence what is the important role which we in quality profession can do in achieving the SDGs or in driving sustainability? And then after this, I'll uh, reinforce your answers. And that would be the uh, focus of our discussion for the next 30 minutes. All right, so again, one minute exercise in the chat box. No right or wrong answer. What? do you think is the role of quality professionals? No, uh, Whether you are a member of PSQ, you are a quality professional, or you're into quality, what is our role? No? Oh, I, I love uh, what, I, what I've seen. Game, government, academe, industry, uh, network, right? So what about the others? Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nara, if you don't mind, uh, is it possible to put you in spotlight? I, I love what you, uh, and I want to explore what you mean by the gain uh, in relation to our question. Is that okay? Hi, June. Good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi, hi, hi. Good afternoon. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yep. Please share your insights about the gain. So right now, uh, I'm from National University, by the way, and I'm an officer of PSQ as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Hello, PSQ Nation. So what we mean by Government Academy Industry Network is uh, it's like bridging the gap between I what see. the academic institution uh, teaches uh, that is based on the needs of the government and the industry so that mm -hmm. uh, there will be uh, less uh, negativity or less probability that uh, there will be a job mismatch. So that mm -hmm. we will be able to achieve like a decent work, like reduce inequality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We will be targeting uh, many SDG when we do this because uh, uh, academic institution is like uh, the foundation work of, uh, of what we provide and what we release, the kind of students, the type of students mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we release in the wild, in the industry right. and uh, in the government work. Right. So that's it. Okay. Yeah. Well said, uh, Dr. Navarro, uh, Dr. Naro. Yeah, thank you. There are only two answers, and uh, this is the most important question uh, that we need to answer now. What is our role uh, as quality professional in sustainability? In addition to, yes, of course, Anna, pulling our sleeves and start working into it, right? Uh, what, what about the others? No? So I would encourage uh, everyone uh, so strongly uh, I'd like to put so much focus and attention into this question because these are this is the question that we will answer in the next slide. So I kind of uh, waiting with excitement uh, about your insights. No, what what is your role in quality or as a quality practitioner? Need to improve quality of communication between government agencies. Thank you, uh, Danielle. Right. So yeah, uh, can we have one minute? And then let's compose our thoughts. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly correct. What, what is in our mind? Uh, can we just share? Right. I'm almost like begging <laughs> because this is really an important question. Yeah. So the takeoff there, it's based on what you've seen, the photos, no? So if I may share back these photos, no? So this is where we are. This is where we are. Globally, this is where we are. There are still a lot of problems uh, on discrimination. Uh, we are sliding back in our global gender. Proliferation of fake news. Uh, what happening in the social media? Very ugly, right? This one, uh, forests getting naked. Uh, if I show you this, uh, uh, it's about pedestrian lane not being respected by motorists, right? Lack of inclusivity consciousness, disregard to basic laws, right? And uh, poverty is still persists. So with all of this, 
right? What can we do? Meaning, what is our role? Anyone who would like to share his insight verbally, a volunteer? Or maybe I'd like to call someone, if you don't mind, right? Uh, Ellen, Ellen Halover. I hope I pronounced uh, the name correctly. Is it okay if you share your insight? Or if not, uh, what about, all right, I'll, what about Janelle Fiesta? Or one more, last and final call, uh, if not Janelle, uh, Erica. Okay, balikan ko kayo. <laughs> I'll get back to you on this. No, So what has been done already in the field of quality as far as ISO or as far as uh, sustainability is concerned? So there are progress, no, even if it's slow. Okay, One is, I'm not sure if uh, you've come across uh, ISO 26,000, right? So this was like uh, uh, almost like 10 years ago, 20... Uh, 13, right, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, there is a social responsibility uh, guidance. No? So it's not a certification, but ISO came up with uh, ISO 26,000 uh, to guide organizations in managing their corporate social responsibility as a process and as a uh, discipline. So this is one good thing that came out before. Uh, recently, uh, there is already a guideline for addressing sustainability in these standards. And this is via uh, the ISO published 2019, which was adopted by the Philippine National Standard uh, 82 uh, 2020. Right? So things are uh, getting traction as far as the integration of quality with sustainability. Um, this slide, a lot of details, but uh, I'd like to paint attention. Uh, to the one that is uh, like at the center uh, where there is a lot of NA, <laughs> right? And so the GRI is normally the reporting uh, uh, reporting standards for sustainability. And at the right side, you have the national laws uh, and regulations on sustainability reporting. So there are already standards in ISO uh, that supports uh, quality, right? So uh, 45,001, uh, is there. Obviously, 14,001 that's covering uh, the environment is also there. But I, from here on, I will focus on the simple one, uh, the quality management system and how it can be integrated into uh, sustainability, right? So uh, your ISO 9001 okay, and ESG sustainability are interconnected. I can say they are intertwined in terms of documentation, in terms of leadership, and even in the parameters in the process. How is this so? Is something that we would talk about no? in terms of what can we do next? So if they are uh, integrated and related or interconnected, what can we do now as quality practitioners? And uh, what I present to you are actionable insights that you can start uh, thinking of how to uh, implement or apply. Right. First one, it's about in ISO, uh, can you like uh, hit the like button if your organization is ISO certified, regardless of the standard? Yeah, just hit the like button, please. <laughs> All right. Oh, there, I can see Ana Puyo. Uh, who else? No, who are from an ISO certified organization? Or if you're not in a ISO certified organization now, maybe in the past, so that's still okay. If you have work in an ISO certified company, yes, you can you can still uh, hit the like button, right? 
Okay. So uh, the fundamental uh, concept of ISO 9001 uh, during its shift, because I came from 2000 version, 1994 version, 2000, 2008, and then 2015, I've been there you know, in various certifications. One of the fundamental shift is that quality is now very strategic because of the close context of the organization. And in the context of the organization, one of the things that are required, if you do it really you know, uh, seriously, is uh, the issues that affect the organization. Now, in that sense, there is already the integration of quality and sustainability, but it depends on how your organization, and so this is where uh, quality practitioners can push the agenda of sustainability. Because anyone who don't say, uh, or who would say that sustainability is not an issue uh, in any organization, we can argue ab about that. Uh, the, the nature of business might not be uh, into chemical or hazardous. Uh, it might be in a bank. It might be in insurance. No, But sustainability is beyond environment. It is also about social. It's about governance. And so those two space. And even if, if your business is not into environment, your people are the very same people who would either protect or destroy the environment outside uh, of their uh, workplaces. So if, if we're talking about, uh, like I was talking to uh, a company with about 8,000 plus employees. So I, I kind of uh, painted a picture. Imagine what this 8,000 employees can do, uh, multiple by 10, if they become sustainability champions, they promote, uh, the right practices in environment, social, and governance, multiply by 10. And then as they uh, as it multiplies, multiply it again by 10 and by 10. So you get the numbers uh, where it is leading to. It's exponential. And so uh, then SDG becomes possible because of that. No? So uh, the first challenge and opportunity for quality practitioners is to put it put sustainability into the context of the organization, right? And that is not being done in many organizations. So it's something that we can promote. Uh, most often when auditors audit, they would look at SWOT analysis and they would base it on, on what they have. So uh, influencing and setting the agenda is one of the things that we can do. We have the powerful uh, role uh, in our organizations, whether you are doing external consulting in quality or you are the internal consultant. The other one is we can play a key role in helping the organizations reimagine uh, quality as it relates to sustainability, retooling our processes and our uh, employees so that they can use uh, the principles and best practices or tools of quality uh, to sustainability and vice versa, right? And we can remake the processes such that uh, when you look at the process and map it against the context of the organization and against the interested parties requirement of your ISO 9001, those are powerful enablers of sustainability. In what sense? Is the community an interested party? It is. Right? Normally, companies, regardless of your industry, you have a footprint in your communities. So they are an interested parties. Is the government in the context of uh, governance, are they an interested party to your process? They are. And every company has uh, the legal obligation and ethical obligation on the art of governance, right? Uh, the citizens of that company of your companies uh, do you are they also an interested uh, party when it comes to their behaviors outside the organizations they are so we are looking at uh, coming up to this uh, model where the end result is that the processes uh, are driven by quality so that sustainability is embedded there and the employees and the members of the organization, including suppliers, uh, agents, you know, employees, 
are able to retool themselves and remake their behavior such that they promote uh, sustainability within their processes, within their company, and outside. Right. So one thing that we can reimagine is the definition of quality. Uh, I was I remember so well uh, the teachings or uh, the one that I got in the year 1999 when I attended uh, something related to quality that Q equals E squared. Quality is effectiveness and efficiency. And during uh, the lead auditor's course uh, for all these versions, 19, uh, 2000, 2008, 2015, we were taught here and abroad, no? uh, to simplify, you are auditing the effectiveness the, and the efficiency of the process in addition to the compliance, right? And if you define quality, it's a set of characteristics of an object, uh, how it fulfills requirements. And we can redefine this. And we can push this agenda. Why don't we put sustainability as one of the pillars of quality? Right? And why don't we make sustainability as a basic requirement? In the ISOE standards, it did not specify uh, the wordings, but it leaves a room enough for us to put sustainability there where the requirements of the stakeholders, our communities, the government, the society are basic stakeholders of whatever organization you have. If you look at the requirement of 8.2.3.1 in ISO 9001, this is what I'm talking about. And if you juxtapose this with the Kano model uh, where the requirements are classified into basic, uh, performance needs and delighters, then is it possible that we can put sustainability uh, not just as a delighter, but as a basic needs? That every process uh, should meet sustainability requirements. For example, if you are looking at, uh, let's say, a recruitment uh, process and you are auditing that or you are helping others set that up, isn't it that diversity, inclusion uh, are essential aspect of uh, the recruitment process? So how many ISO auditors, quality practitioners are pushing this agenda uh, that the process should contain uh, those kind of requirements? And you can map that out against interested stakeholders and against the context of the organization. So very powerful role uh, that we play in pushing this agenda. Uh, the most important uh, takeaway that I'd like you to have is that is to look at sustainability, not as a CSR program, not just as a strategy, not just as a reporting or compliance, but in our language as quality practitioners, it is a process. It can be a process that can be lumped into PDCA, Right, understanding the issues uh, is part of the planning of the P. Developing and implementing actions uh, are your do. Evaluating the performance is your check, and uh, uh, building the capacity and engaging can be your action. Right, so it's a process. So if we accept that sustainability is a process, then the question is: Is sustainability included among the processes that are certified? Is it part of the audit checklist by organizations? Is it in the radar of quality practitioners to be reviewed? Uh, ISO 9001 and other standards are risk-oriented, risk-based thinking. Is it possible, and we can make this possible, to make it also sustainability thinking? Now, sustainability, you can look at it from the point of view of risk, that what we do today presents a risk and opportunity to the next uh, generation. So even in that concept already, you can, uh, you can already integrate quality and uh, sustainability. So for us, uh, embedding uh, quality into uh, sustainability into your quality practice is a must. 
it is a must if we believe, and I'm sure you all do believe, the importance of our malasakit towards the next generation. So I'd say that sustainability is one of the, if not the most important process in any organization, because it takes care of both the profit uh, of the three Ps, the profit, the people, and the planet. So tell me a process that takes care of these three. Recruitment takes care of people, but when you embed it, it takes care of the three. So it's like sustainability is the unifying process that enables organizations uh, and us uh, to create a better world for the society. So if you look at the context, then quality becomes even more an inspiring, a more noble profession because we drive and we can drive sustainability first into the agenda and into the practice. So look at this, right? So when we diagnose an organization's context, no, in the context of ISO 9001, right? So we are talking about reputational issues, customer issues, growth and profitability, capability, people and culture. Very, very important pillars uh, of uh, an organizational context. These are, you can say, strategic pillars. But what about sustainability? Right. So I encourage everyone who are into quality uh, to start uh, influencing uh, your organizations to put sustainability agenda. Look at this. Uh, this is from Moresco from Japan. Uh, look at how powerful their quality policy is. Uh, I used to write a lot of quality policies. And believe me, uh, before 2018, most of my quality policies are the typical ones. No, It's only recently that I become so... Uh, into quality policy that integrates uh, sustainability, right? So make the best use of the group's resources and contribute to the realization of a sustainable society. What about their mission statement? What about their vision statement? I just uh, attended a meeting with a client, and this is a well-known organization, and I look at their mission. It talks about being profitable. And so when we ask them about being sustainable, their contributions to the world, uh, now they ask us to do a workshop <laughs> because they realize that they're mis the, that is the missing link, right? So the focus of quality, therefore, it's not only providing the capability to the process and to the people. Uh, it's not only about enabling customer centricity or customer satisfaction. It's not only about uh, translating the customer centricity into profitability. But above all, it is about uh, enabling uh, sustainability. So in conclusion, these are the key points. Sustainability and quality are intertwined. Sustainability is a process that can be managed using quality management framework and other standards. As a process, sustainability is one of the most important one, given its impact to people, planet, and profit, or progress, if you may covering the current and future generations. I don't see any other process that has that in its scope, that it covers the three Ps and the current and future generations. It is only sustainability. And so if we pick one process uh, that we can put attention to, it's sustainability. And sustainability can be enabled by applying principles, best practices, and tools of quality. If you talk to the sustainability champions, how many of them are really managing their sustainability as a process? How many of them are looking at adopting uh, ISO 9001 as a framework? How many of them are even aware of uh, these ISO frameworks? How many of them are doing uh, really the deep dive Six Sigma root cause analysis using tools applied? So we can empower them. We can enable them. They're doing a lot of marvelous works already, and that's the support we can give. So quality professionals like you and I, we can start proactively driving quality in sustainability. We have the knowledge, we have uh, the resources, uh, what we need uh, to embed is our heart for it 
and being able to influence uh, leaders of our organization to put sustainability into their strategic agenda. And that's where uh, quality professionals and PSQ as a collective body can do. So what we are hoping to find uh, as stories later on is how sustainability becomes a more robust process, how they are able, how uh, communities, companies, and societies are able to contribute in achieving the SGDs uh, through quality. And I hope that you can take pride in those stories later on uh, where you become an enabler, an influencer, uh, in terms of uh, empowering those who are into it. So uh, thank you very much for providing uh, NRI and myself with the opportunity of uh, putting into your, implanting into your uh, thoughts, uh, the importance uh, of uh, your role and your organization's role in driving uh, sustainability. Yeah, thank you everyone. So. Uh, I have time to entertain a few questions. All right. Thank you, Sir June. It was an insightful discussion. Uh, some key takeaways for me include emphasizing sustainability as a moral ob obligation for everyone as it ensures our future and the future of the next generation. Also, you have mentioned that uh, as we apply it to our organization as quality practi practitioners, rather, our key role is, I, I, I love these three words, reimagining, retooling, and remaking. Remaking quality practices to enable sustainability as it is intertwined. Um, it's really a, ano po, uh, parang, um, a, real, a realization. And um, also, when you say um, reimagining, retooling, you said that uh, we should redefine quality by including sustainability as a requirement at its core. Because uh, it's not just a project or a CSR. Uh, we should uh, embed sustainability as an important process. Also, um, you've mentioned that um, it's better that we uh, put quality, uh, put sustainability in our quality policy because um, we should aim for policies that goes beyond customer satisfaction. So now we will go. We will now go ahead and take some time for questions. Um, just a reminder: please type your question in the chat box. Yeah. All right. Yeah, please, I, I love to entertain the questions. I have time. Don't worry, I can extend. Yes, and up of to tomorrow. If, <laughs> and also, if you have insights as well, please do share yeah. it with us. Yeah. yeah. Comments, insights. No, uh, what was yes. your takeaway? Your key takeaways, right? So, if you have one, I'm pretty sure not just one. You have a lot because me, I I've written a lot here, and as I mentioned a while ago, it was really um uh refreshing because we all know what sustainability is already, but um inter um uh marrying, combining it. or marrying <laughs> it with quality kaya nahirapan parang bigla kami nahirapan sa wagot a while ago o nga no and then um yeah it was really ano um uh, something to look at um especially in our policies um kasi right now it's like um some of us um magiging honest na tayo we're using this we, we're only doing sustainability as a csr diba? so but now yeah it we must look at we must put we must embed sustainability as well in our policies and um making it as making it is making making it a requirement uh, in doing our quality policy. So we okay. have here some um, insights. Ah, a question here. What small steps can MSMEs do to achieve sustainability considering they have very little resources? All right. Uh, excellent question. No, um, Awareness building is the starting point. So if uh, they can educate uh, in their own uh, practical ways, of uh, their employees no uh, or those who are helping them 
uh, to become you know uh, practitioners of basic uh, sustainability behaviors the other one it's uh, integrating uh, basic practices uh, in their businesses what are these no if it is uh, if it is governance pay the right tax <laughs> yeah pay, pay the right tax and my my barometer always there and it's not only for msme right everyone that i talk to cedula or community tax certificate why because if you don't pay the right uh, community tax certificate actually nobody will know the treasurer in the municipio will only ask and uh, look at it you pay that's it but you throw away the ethical side of governance there because you declared or we declared that our uh, salary is just like minimum or we take a cut no so paying the right tax is uh, important thing uh practical steps on uh on the environment waste segregation uh, uh proper waste disposal and so MSMEs can do a lot, even in those simple things. The problem is, the question is, who will empower the MEs, MEs? Because it's not natural for them uh, to automatically think about the three Ps. For them, it's about uh, on the first P, which is the profit. And there's profit. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So the, the role of organizations like PSQ, uh, PMAP for that matter, where I came from, PSTD, uh, and others, no. Uh, we can empower uh, the MEs, MEs uh, to do this. So, if there is a a sustainable corporate social responsibility program, it's the one that is directed towards empowering MEs, MEs. Why? Ninety nine point five percent of the enterprises are with them. So, there's so much small steps that the uh, they can do, but uh, we can also help. Uh, expedite that process. So very interesting and very insightful question there, uh, Dr. Naro. Thank you for that. All right. Thank you, Dr. Naro. Thank you, Sir June. Any other questions from oh, our yung, audience? Oh, yung iba naman. Oh, oh, tanong or uh, comment or reaction? Yeah, comments, reactions, insight. Although we received some uh, thank you notes from our different um, particip uh, from our participants, rather. Uh, I think there's another question. Uh, what research areas or topic are very urgent to be conducted in terms of sustainability? Okay, I asked the same question with my talk uh, with the DNR. Uh, what is the? It's a basic question. Uh, what is the? Uh, environmental so I, I did not cover the entire sustainability only the environmental awareness score of uh, ncr right not the entire philippines ncr only and when the when there is no answer to that okay what about the environmental consciousness of uh, the private sector of the academe so in uh, uh, research focusing only on environmental consciousness or awareness is a good starting point because it gives you data and that data uh, can trigger a lot of programs no uh, the other research topics that i hope uh, uh, we can influence later on how many organizations have uh, culture building programs towards uh, sustainability because all the organizations that we talk to including the publicly listed companies and the big names they are is still about to do it or not yet into it, but they invest millions in sustainability uh, processes, uh, products and solutions. They do. They have culture building on customer, on innovation, on data, on digital, but not sustainability. So we're kind of marrying them, uh, sustainability culture, right? Uh, the other one is how many organizations, how many quality practitioners are... Uh, into sustainability, right? How many uh, how many companies who are certified in ISO who are or who have uh, quality uh, programs, whether it's Six Sigma, uh, nine thousand one, IMS, uh, have embedded sustainability into their processes, right? So these are data that are rich in insights that can drive uh, change, and these are just examples. No, gaganda ng mga tanong, no. Isa na lang sa iba, uh, ako ang magtatawag. 
mahigpit na prof si sir. Oh, but, oh, mahigpit, <laughs> mahigpit. Isa na lang. Uh, si uh, Josa. Josa Marie. Insights, reactions, uh, anything. Okay, I'll give you a uh, insight here. One of the first things in sustainability advocacy is making your voice heard, no matter what. Uh, there's a book that uh, says it all. Uh, mm. You matter. And so in this conversation, you all matter. Uh, so can we recap with just uh, one thought or one uh, sharing from anyone before we go? Sabi sa akin ni Ray, very active ang mga taga-PSQ. <laughs> And I, I believe that, no? Isa lang. Oh, we have similar program. We matter. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. I matter. <laughs> I matter. Very good. Right. Well, I'm taker. No taker. Otherwise, I will call Hi, Ray. Hi, sir. This ah, yes, Noel. yes. Noel, yes. yes. You say yes, today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good day po. Um, it's more of an insight for me because, to be honest, this is my first time to attend in in PSQ, and I'm I'm quite amazed with with this uh meeting because, um, first it made me more aware of the sustainability program because, to be honest, hindi siya ganon um to me. Um, parang synced in and so I think this forum also made me more aware on it and I think this is just a door for you know for being the catalyst of change or enable things that I might go moving forward and somehow influence the organization or the people that I work with or you know the, not the, the acquaintances that I have so first I'd like to thank you for sharing that knowledge to me and to us I'd say and It's really very insightful. Thank you, sir. That's all I can say. No question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Noel. Very empowering thought. Uh, I love actually to hear those kind of sharings where uh, there is an insight, no? Uh, that it's like lurking. It's there. You see it. You see sustainability. You see quality. But uh, it takes someone to put it together, right? And that's my role. And uh, I, I love the fact that you appreciate that. So it's now your turn. to also create opportunities for conversation with others no so may utang ka <laughs> but thank you noel for that no yes thank you noel and welcome to psq <laughs> since he mentioned school, it was uh-oh. it is his, this is his first time so right. we will be hearing from noel more <laughs> how about the others if you have any questions or insights we'd love to hear them I keep on seeing uh, Xiaomi. Ready na siya eh, kasi naka-video on na eh. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Xiaomi, come on. Or anyone. Isa na lang. Kota na tayo. Kota na ba? <laughs> Kota na. Isa na lang. Anybody? I'm pretty sure they have a lot of insights. Makanahihiya lang. Sige na. <laughs> Now, I'm kind of forcing it because one of uh, the sustainability heroes in the world, uh, Patsy Dewar, uh, she's the head of sustainability uh, of Thomson Reuters. And uh, uh, it struck me what she said. No, uh, that A good starting point is Make them talk about it. Let them speak yeah. about it. No? And uh, so once that conversations start flowing, then actions can start coming. No? So that's what sure. we are basically doing now. No? Uh, not really compelling or forcing, but uh, encouraging you to start the conversation. Because one of the things that we'd like to see after this, it's as you gain interest mm -hmm. uh, in the integration of quality and sustainability, you start talking about it, right? And as yeah. you talk about it, you start delving more about it, learning more how what are the possible ways by which you can integrate. And then eventually taking creative steps 
to do that uh, integration brick by brick step by step yeah. yeah it's like exploring your thoughts through the lens of your own experience right yeah exactly because like for me i was more into quality uh, since 1999 and uh, strategy and od and hr but for the life of me not in sustainability i, I i'm a convert so my conversion came in 2020 mm -hmm. yeah, during the pandemic but it's a slow conversion right mm -hmm. it's like okay interesting yeah uh, and then as i go deep into it right uh to cut this story short here i am passionately talking about it you can perhaps uh, glean it in my voice as i speak about it no full of energy it's because it's 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 a topic that uh, i can wake up to it every day it's like i see my life's mission this is it influencing others uh, to embrace sustainability uh in the way they work so whether you are an accountant i will speak to you about the integration of finance in sustainability or if you are in quality i'll speak to you about the integration mm -hmm. right so uh, i hope uh that the same kind of energy and i was inspired uh, by someone actually uh my colleagues jonas dum dum and the others they have inspired me you no know? so this kind of conversion that happened to me and it ha also happens to others Mm -hmm. is the kind of uh, uh, takeaways that we'd like to see uh, in you and in others. Uh, why? Yeah, because what we're doing here is something that is very noble, not only for our country, but for our world. Yeah, we may not change the world, but the collective steps that we do, it's like the darkness. We can, uh, one, one single uh, candle can light uh, that entire darkness. So, yeah. Uh, that's my small thoughts. steps small <laughs> steps yeah that's why if if i'm being asked so where do we start uh okay if i ask this question where's the possible uh, best start to integrate quality where now it, it's not in your organizational context it's not in your quality policy it's in the first uh two minor topics that we have it's about it it, it starts with you Yes. So the reason why we showed you the pictures because you have to feel it. No, Malasakit is a feeling. It's an emotion, right? So it's driven by emotion, not just by head, but also by heart. And when it's driven by head and heart, then it actions the hand uh, can uh, take its place. So uh, are we moved? Uh, do we care? Uh, are we bothered uh, when we see people in the social media propagating fake news, nagbabardagula, nagaaway? uh unprintable words come out here and there or is a tayo sa mga because of our politics uh we are one of those who you know uh propagate a war you know and uh terrorism if you may you know in the internet uh yes. when we when we go to pedestrian lane right para kang tanga eh, na sorry for the word para parang ganun yung yung feeling eh na sila tumatawid kahit na red Pero ikaw, dahil sustainability hero ka ko, no, nandoon ka lang. Uh, that happens to me. Ano ba ito? Talagang nagpapakamartyr ba ako? O hindi? <laughs> Pwede nang tumawid eh. Kaya lang red eh. So like last night, no? Uh, yung corner ng Ayala to papuntang Buendia, that our RCBC Plaza. Palagi ko yun kasi uh, our office is in RCBC Plaza. Pus pag nataon ako doon, malinaw naman. Stop on red. <laughs> And yeah. so, binubusinahan ka ng mga kung sino-sino they want you to go kasi clear naman eh walang tumatawid but it's clear and so in in many cases it's between you and your conscience you and your sense of morality mm -hmm. and so if that is clear uh, you can infect or you can influence uh, other people by your uh, examples and True. we have a lot of opportunities so i hope that uh, this conversation that we have today uh, can be continued by you in your own respective uh, families, friends, communities uh, in your own ways. No? True. Okay, si Sir Ray, baka si Sir Ray, thank you for inviting me. So I'm not sure if uh, he will speak later on, but of course I'd like to hear his thoughts at the end. Yeah, and so thank you, Sir June. Yes, we have to make our sustainable decision, uh, especially 
first of course sa ating mga personal actions and decisions and then of course we can always like sir ramdam na ramdam mo nagko-cross sa screen yung kanyang passion about sustainability and if we can have at least 10% of that and uh, apply it where we are at home or in our organization i think those small steps will matter all right sir okay so i think we've covered all our questions and i think uh sir june have cover uh have wrapped it up already so in gratitude of our speaker's contribution today's to today's seminar here with is the certificate of appreciation thank you all right so thank you um here here is our Certificate of Appreciation given to Mr. Juan M. Roy for imparting valuable insights and inspiration to the participants during the PSQ's December 2022 National Webinar with the topic, Driving Sustainability Through Quality, given this date, December 16, 2022. Signed by our President, um, Dr. Ray B. Fremista. Thank you, sir. Let's give... Uh, Sir Roy, a virtual cap, a, a virtual clap, rather. Thank you, thank you, Ray. Yeah, uh, please uh, preserve your voice. <laughs> Take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's it for our today's um, session. But we would love to hear your thoughts. Please help us achieve better activities and events. So please share your experience by answering this survey all those who will be successfully completing the survey shall receive a certificate of completion for this webinar all right so just to share to you who we are as an organization PSQ is a national, professional, non-stop, non-profit organization established in 1969 in cooperation with the Productivity Development Center and 64 charter members. So our vision to be the leading network that inspires and shapes quality and organizational excellence leaders. Our mission, we are a network of agile, innovative, and trusted partner of choice who create value and drive advancement in quality and organizational excellence. Here are some of the speakers we have invited. And here are some of the organization we collaborated. Of course, these are the trainings that uh, PSQ have organized for the past years, and I think they're doing it uh, from time to time. And here are some of the awards. And uh, DTI as a partner, PSQ is the PQA administrator for the private sector. PQA is the highest national recognition for exemplary organizational performance of private and public organizations in the country. And here are some of the technical hubs of PSQ. So what are you waiting for? Please join us. Uh, here is the email address that you can send your intent. Uh, we, will, we will love to uh, entertain your queries about the organization. So that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for today. It was really an insightful afternoon, a very productive one. I hope that after today, uh, we shall make steps in making our sustainable decisions, not just in our organizations, but in our personal lives. Again, this is Ara, your host for today. Thank you and goodbye.